began to share stories about my dad. One time we're in a diner and this Caucasian man came up to us and started crying a little bit. He said, you know, I have to denounce how my father raised me. He was KKK and I, they, he raised me to hate black people and I loved you and you were a black man and you were an exceptional man and I knew black people weren't inferior because of you. And we were all crying there in the diner and that was the moment I really understood what my father meant to people and it went beyond sports. And this might shock and amaze you, but I will destroy Ooh. Joe Frazier. You've seen I Am Ali how many times? Now, how many times have you Five. seen Five. <laughs> Five times? What are some of your favorite wow, moments? Wow, you know, I have to be honest. My Go favorite ahead. moment is when I tell my dad he's too old to fight. I was 11 and he was 37, I believe. And he said, May, may I, I, I might fight again. He tried to get the title for the fourth time. And there's a pause and I say, no. And he goes, yeah, wouldn't it be great? And I says, you're too old. I was on my way out the door to a meeting and I got a call. And uh, I was told, your dad's gonna light the torch, call all your siblings. I'm like, what? So I called everybody up. I don't even know if we all got to watch it because we didn't know. And it was just a beautiful moment because to me, um, it was very pivotal. I thought for him because he realized people still loved him with Parkinson's. He needed that. He needed to see that people still cared for him, you know, even with Parkinson's disease. Oh, well, I'll well, stop it. Well. Stop me. You. How soon? What round? Look, don't, 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 don't let him out. One to ten. You be, he got we famous. Yeah, about us boxers around we here. I'm going to bring up another old school name for you. One of the things that when you're looking through 
YouTube. Yeah. You see all of this sort of back and forth between uh, your father and Howard Cosell. Oh, I love Howard Cosell. Yes. I mean, they loved each other, man. They really did. I love what Howard Cosell says to him, Muhammad, you're not the man you used to be in the ring. <laughs> Dad said, I just saw your wife, and she said, you you're not the man, man you used to be. <laughs> This is interesting. This was uh, his last fight in the Bahamas. It was a Trevor Burbick fight, and we were really happy he lost. First time. Why were you happy he lost? Because we wanted him to quit. Oh. We didn't want him to even fight that fight. So we're all praying that he would lose. I hate <laughs> to say that, but if he won, he would have kept going. Round five. This will be no contest. This will be a total annihilation. Now I know your father has an ego, but do, <laughs> but do you think even he realizes? how well known he is and you what type what? of impact he's had not just in terms yeah. of sports but in terms of american history he does understand his place in history because he you know made that happen for himself um but he does have very humble moments where he'll say wow people still remember me so he's not so arrogant where he ever thinks i'll always be remembered he always questions will they remember me And uh, that is what we are doing this morning. We are remembering the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Wow. Dead at the age of 74, uh, dying last night after a, 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 a three decades battle with Parkinson's disease. He was admitted to the hospital earlier uh, Friday morning with respiratory ailments. Uh, if you've read enough of those those little headlines about someone being admitted, you can kind of read the undertone about how it's serious. And exactly. uh, it turned out to be just that way. Good morning, Baton Rouge. Uh, this is uh, a special edition of the Louisiana All-American Sports Show. Uh, we had a, a, a buffet of, of, of local and, and, and national sports to talk about, but that all, of course, um, sometime late last night, early this morning, was, was postponed uh, in the wake of the news of the passing of former three-time heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. Good morning. This is Eric Hatfield. And I'm Gerard Piper, a.k.a. Joker P. And I'm Coach Perry Daniels. And, uh, man, it's just uh, a very solemn day, uh, but we're celebrating. We're celebrating the life of the greatest, man, and how fortunate we were to be born and to be able to witness and see uh, such a magnificent human being. Your coach, I, I, um, I, you know, it's one of those things that usually most people listen to the show know I'm rarely at a loss for words, but I almost don't know where to start uh, with this with this man. Not just a sports icon, but a social activist, and and later in life really became a, a, a symbol of, of all the, the things good that he and his era represented. Uh, stayed active really up until the very, very end. He was always in the public eye until a few years ago. Um, uh, 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 honored by by all presidential medal of freedom recipient in 2005 uh, revered by re revered really i mean this man at the time of his death in spite of a, a turbulent and, and controversial times in his life is uh i don't want to use the word universal but but almost universally revered and 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 loved um i guess i guess the easiest way to jump in is to start with the brass tacks of course muhammad ali was three-time heavyweight champion uh stood six foot uh, three uh, had a reach of 78 inches. Uh, he had uh, 61 professional fights, 56 wins, 37 of those wins by knockout, five losses. He had won 31 consecutive fights before losing his first professional fight to George Foreman in uh, 1971 in the quote fight of the century. Muhammad Ali uh, won a gold medal in the 1960 Olympics uh, by knocking out a, a, revere, uh, a, 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 a Polish champion. I just don't have his name. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Eric. Eric, did that say he, lo he lost to Frazier, not Foreman? Did I say, fo I'm sorry, yeah, I'm, Joe oh, Frazier. wow, I'm so sorry. Joe Frazier. That was, I apparently haven't had enough of my coffee. I meant to start it with the letter F. Joe <laughs> Frazier, sorry folks, that is a brain hiccup on my part. He lost to Joe Frazier in 1971, <laughs> not George Foreman, in the fight of the century. Sorry about that, my bad. Oh yeah. Man. My bad, oh, man. sorry about that, thank you that's coach. That's almost blasphemous. Yeah, I know, that is blasphemous, that's that's my fault. Sorry <laughs> no, about that, man, uh, no. but he won a gold medal in the 1960 Olympics, of course he returned. Uh, to Kentucky, a lot of a lot of articles cataloged that he, there was a parade in his honor back in Louisville, but yet he couldn't get served in a restaurant. There, 
Um, of course, some legends say he threw his gold medal away. Some say he lost it. It was uh, re-presented to him in 1996. But nonetheless, it was the beginning of a great sports career and a great career in activism. Ali went on to win the heavyweight championship. Uh, he was a 7-1 to underdog against uh, then-heavyweight champion Sonny Liston, defeated him in 1964. Shortly thereafter, changed his name to Cassius X, and then eventually Muhammad Ali, after joining uh, or you know, telling the world he was a member of the Nation of Islam, that he had converted to Islam. Uh, a very uh, tumultuous ride as... Um, in 1967, he conscientiously objected to the Vietnam War. Uh, he was stripped of his passport, his boxing licenses, his titles. Wow. Eventually, wow. he was uh, tried and convicted of a felony charge that involved uh, of felony draft evasion. Was they threw the book at him, gave him five years in, right. in jail, ten thousand dollar fine, was banned from boxing for three years. Lost everything. The United States Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, you don't see too many of those anymore. Unanimous decision in 1970. I hope I got that right. 1970 yes. uh, threw it out. Uh, basically said that he had a right to conscientiously object in so many words, and then there was the the first of a, a first of a couple of returns to the top. Uh, he lost to Frazier, but he came back and uh, was it the Rumble in the Jungle where he got that title back the second time, or was it the Foreman fight? This is a little bit before was, my time. Well, actually, so, so actually the, it was the, the, the Foreman fight yeah. was the Rumble in the Jungle. That was in '73, correct? That's right. And that was where he won. Yeah, that's where he I, got. Go ahead, coach. Let's, let's, yeah, let, let's let the, uh, the the video lineups tell it as we go along. As we go, it's, it was it was a it was yeah. a hell of a ride, man. And I'm gonna start off with a video here. First, I wanted to say that, um, of course, Muhammad Ali is my personally my greatest uh, hero of any sport of of um, you know you know just him being a fighter, not only in the ring, and you know just for, uh, all that he did. So it speaks for itself. So I'm gonna start off with. An original um, Sonny Liston way in interview. Check this out. <laughs> oh, one, two, three, yeah, 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 steal, woo, hold on, hold on, I'm trying to get him, 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 get inspired a lot of people all over the world and I want you to listen to the most inspirational words from Muhammad Ali after beating George Foreman. I kept talking to him during the fight too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Am I the greatest of all times? Muhammad, you told me in Deer Lake you were the greatest of all time. 
and I think everybody out there watching now will say that you've proved it to me. man who has <laughs> burned me up, too powerful, too strong, I proved that Allah is God. That's right. Elijah Muhammad is a messenger, right. and I have faith in them, and regardless of the world and the pressure, I made it an easy night, because Allah has power over all things. If you believe in him, nothing, even George Fullman, will look like a baby. It wasn't a close fight, was it? No, it wasn't no, a close no, fight. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. I told you, my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time when I beat Sunday Listen, I told you today I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. <laughs> I get me. But I, I didn't dance for a reason. I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. <laughs> Let us see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad, but I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxing. Staying on the ropes is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Sullivan two rounds of steady punching because after that he was mine. But he was falling, he was missing. I don't know if I'm going to fight again or not. I'm going to retire as of now. I have to talk to my leader, the most honorable. Are you still planning to retire? I said, I'm a to all the Muslims. Thanks to Almighty God Allah. I want all of you fans out there who believe in me, read the Muhammad Speaks newspapers, go to your local Muslim temple, and learn more about the life-giving power from Allah through Elijah Muhammad. The last guy, you saw all the white people, the critics, the world, had me ranked to go down. This was my man. And, Allah, Allah me, and this man looked like nothing. Right. Well, I want you to remember that. Well, want to know where I get the power? Visit your local Muslim mosque. Read the Muslim speaks newspaper. Take it from me. That just proves you can have commercials on closed-circuit television, just as you've never done real life. <laughs> Muhammad, what did you say to George Foreman? Not a commercial. Tell people to believe Tell me, what did you say to George Foreman before the fight? What did you say? I told him he has no power. Uh, in the corners and in the clinches. Joker, is this the one in Africa? Was that the fight in Africa? Yeah. They told okay. me he was strong. Didn't, this, didn't I look stronger than him? Why, why didn't you tell me, Mami? This is the thing that puzzled people. Why was it when you were on the road that he Say could what? not hurt you, even when you were right there on the road oh, yeah. pocket? And I was pulling back. Oh, really? I have a radar built inside me. I know how to do his punches. Didn't I tell all of you? Why, hey, Ali, Pumba, I remember. <laughs> I told you. What are they saying? They're saying they want to kill for me. Like and sting like a beast. His hands can't hit. It's got to be one. Yeah. So that's what happened. I don't think he's that strong. That's what you said to me. But tell me now, are you really going to retire? Man? Yeah, the water bottles in those days were in glass. There's nothing else for me to fight. I'm told, well, I'm going to retire. I'm going to hold the title for a few months. I don't think they took my title unjustly. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Oh, all of you bow. All of my critics bow. All <laughs> you suckers who like the Yes, indeed. What a character. You made him great. You made him a bad Right. They stripped him and he beat Lost to Frazier, beat Foreman. And Foreman beat Frazier. And he beat Foreman in Africa. Don't go to Jimmy the Greek. Come to Muhammad Ali. I am the man. What last night, Muhammad Ali? We throw these names out. These are like if you take Muhammad Ali out of the equation. Muhammad Ali was never born. These guys, Frazier, and Foreman, these are legends. These are Mount Rushmore heavyweight fighters. He whipped them all. That was more my life when I met Elijah Muhammad, the freedom speaker of black people. But I want to say this. Hello to all my friends in Louisville, Kentucky. Joe Martin, Fred Stoner, all of my friends in Louisville, Kentucky, where I started. I'm recognized it's an early day shout out. But my greatness came and started in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's one of the greatest cities in America, Louisville, Kentucky. And I predict that Louisville, Kentucky will have another world champion. Because Louisville is the greatest. Louisville. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a character. What a character, man. <laughs> so yeah. let's have a little conversation from here before we play the next clips, man. And, uh, you know, th this man taught us that it was okay as a black man to have confidence. Right. 
right. to, to have confidence in, and that's what he had and it exuded out of all the pores of his body confidence confidence and it was the first time and you're right and you know as a young man me seeing him and looking up to him you know and not only was he he's also a fighter you know what I mean? right. So that's kind of like it goes together. He's not only a fighter was inside the ring, but he fought outside of the ring, man. You know, and I know these athletes and there is no way in the world if they had that much on the line to stand on a certain conviction of his, especially of his religion. Right. To say, hey, I'm not going to go over here. I'm the heavyweight champion. People may not know the, you know, the context of what we're saying, how big Muhammad Ali was, because boxing is not as big. So people, you know, right. but just look at a Floyd Mayweather. I can kind of put him because mm -hmm. he's about the biggest thing in boxing. You know, if he stood on, you know, and I know these guys wouldn't do that. So for him and to be, to see a, a, a black man, you know, stand up to the, you know, uh, quote unquote, the system was almost like he was a, a Malcolm X type figure too. But he really a was. Fighter, right. So mm -hmm. it was just, man, he just, you know, just so, so inspirational. And it, and it gave you confidence. Hey, float like a butterfly. He rhymed. He had swagger. You know, it was the first time you seen someone. He was very handsome. You know what I mean? It was just like he had all of the stuff that, you know, that. Um, no, I'm joking. Not, not handsome. He was pretty. He was pretty. pretty. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty. I'm a bad man. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. He was pretty. That's right. <laughs> you know, I was, um, I, I was six hey, years. Hey, look, Go you know, one of my favorite stories it is when he uh, returned after winning the gold medal and went to go have a hamburger the in restaurant. a yes. segregated restaurant right. and the, the owner told him well well we don't, don't serve, serve in words, words here and he said well good because i don't, I don't eat, eat them either. Either. That's right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's one of my favorite stories too and i think they said that uh because of that experience that that's when he threw the gold medal away they said he went on a bridge that's and threw it away one legend that's the legend i love to i love to look over that one i think it did, he, it didn't when he let the to didn't i remember a story money y'all i know we've been doing research all night and all morning didn't he get didn't they re-give him a the medal in 1996 in yeah, atlanta they, or something like that right, they re-gave it to him again he felt as though when he went to fought in the um in the rome olympics um that you know, he thought when he came back with the gold medal, things would be, would, you know, would change. Mm -hmm. and he thought he would be, you know, come home to a hero's welcome. And they're going to, even though he's black, he's, he wanted to go. He represented America. And when he came back and he still couldn't get served a hamburger, right. you know, and so. Well, and, I don't eat them either. And so <laughs> he thought like, well, you know, yeah, what does gold medal do? And he threw it away. His but, wit. His wit. I mean, even in that circumstance, in that little story, the little anecdote in the, 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 the most, I mean, you, you come, you conquer the world, you come back, you have a parade. It's the supreme insult after all that. You know, they treat you like a uh, hero in the streets, but you can't get served at Burger. Even that, he was still able to use that wit. And it was still legendary. You know, it's incredible what this guy could do. It's incredible. Um, I was six years old when he fought his last fight uh, against Burbick, who, just from a sports angle, that was the bridge. As Burbick was the guy like Tyson beat before he became champion. But anyway, lost to Trevor Burbick. But uh, while, I, while I was a little boy, I always watched the fights. But through the magic of cable and ESPN... You know, and when I was older and able to absorb more of this stuff, really, that was the, the, they brought when they broadcast those Muhammad Ali fights all the time on uh, on super fights or super bouts of the '70s and stuff like that. You know, I got to I got a chance to experience what it, that personality in the ring and that flair, and have a, a whole new appreciation for the man. I mean, this guy was this this guy was one of those folks who transcended boxing, transcended sport, transcended a, a lot of ways. What conventional politics and conventional activism he was just a just a different kind of guy and it's just you know as i was saying before the show he's 74 years old i knew he would die in my lifetime but now that it's happened it still feels surreal like it's i can't believe he's gone because he was that big wow i mean you absolutely so so joker let's uh you want to let's, translate to the uh, song of the day yeah let's do we've got a special song <laughs> of the day it's not really a song it's uh billy crystal's a uh, 15 round tribute to the greatest boxer of all time, Muhammad Ali. Tonight I'd like to pay tribute to this man who is a hero of mine and many others with a piece that I wrote and last performed in 1980. And the champ called me to come tonight, I had to do it. And I'd love to do it for you now, it's called 15 Rounds. Hello once again, everyone. The name is Howard Gosell. We're waiting the arrival home of young 18-year-old Cassius Marcellus Clay, the young man who at the recent 1960 Rome Olympia, break that, shocked and amused the world with his boxing ability and braggadocio, if you will. Here he is now. 
He's only 18 years of age. Catch, you plan to turn professional. <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Postel. You see, nobody's ever seen nothing like me. I'm so fast, I'm so pretty. <laughs> I'm so fast I can play ping pong by myself. This dude. And I'm predicting to you and I'm going to that someday I'm going to gain 30 pounds and become the heavyweight champion of the world. Sonny Liston's not coming out. Incredibly young Cassius Clay, just as he predicted to this reporter four short years ago, has knocked out the man who goes the big ugly bear yeah. and becomes the new heavyweight champion of the world. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. I am Muhammad Ali. I will never be known as Cassius Clay again. Cassius Clay is a slave's name. I'm now a disciple of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm now a black well, Muslim right on. I am now Muhammad Ali. Boy, he, he hit the nail. I vaguely, vaguely, vaguely remember this. In the top this of the uh, day, the I was still in high school. Focused on Houston, Texas, where heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. Oh, hey also known as Cassius yes, yes, Clay, is expected today to refuse military induction on the grounds of being a religious, conscientious objector. objector. Another news, the Vietnam buildup continues today. I will not fight in this war, Howard. I ain't got no quarrel with this over here, huh? This war is an unjust war. I cannot, I will not fight. Does he drop the N-word? Step forward when I okay. call your name, please. <laughs> Step forward when I call your name, please, Cassius Clay. <laughs> Cassius Clay, gentlemen, please have a brief statement. As Commissioner of the New York Boxing Association, we are issuing the following proclamation. A few hours ago, heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali, also known as Cassius Clay, refused military induction. We are hereby stripping him of the heavyweight title. Now, 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 please. The State Department is also revoking his passport. Therefore, he will not be licensed to fight any place in the world, including exhibitions. Today, June 20th, 1967, a sad day for us all. Ali today convicted of draft evasion by $10,000, sentenced to five years in prison. There will be an appeal. For three and a half years, I couldn't fight. The best years, the prime years, man, the great years. Three and a half years, the 26, 27, 28, 29 and a half years old, you know, my best years. But then, out of nowhere, the state of Georgia, 1970, give me a title, license to come back and fight Jerry Quarry. Ugly Jerry Quarry. <laughs> he was right, right back at it, boy. Got the way in. He was right back at it. I couldn't wait. Three rounds, boom, knock him out. Then I go to Madison Square Garden, New York City. Oscar Bonavane is big, is awkward. He comes from Argentina. And then 15 rounds, I go, 15 rounds. Boom, left hook, knock that suck out. And now Joe Frazier's the champion. I want Joe Frazier. Yeah. The winner and still heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Frazier! <laughs> I still think I won. <laughs> now I guess I gotta start all over again. Today, vindication. Ali's conviction for draft evasion today overturned by the United yeah, States Supreme, Supreme Court. Court by an eight to nothing vote. Ali was right. It is indeed an unjust war. Howard, I'm free. I'm free at last. Now I can start all over again, become the heavyweight champion again. Yesterday, an unknown heavyweight from San Diego, California, an unheralded Marine named Ken North, defeated Muhammad I Ali, and so that. doing broke the ex-champion's jaw. Ali fighting 11 rounds with a severely damaged mandible. I'm in the hospital now with Ali. His jaws are wired no shut. Yep. Perhaps, but when I it forgot about the Norton fight. <laughs> <laughs> but more that was another bad at the age man. of 33, have we seen the last of the great Muhammad? Is this the end of the line for you? Even though the jaws are wide shut, they do pretty good. I'm still pretty. Ain't that pretty, Howard? I got messed up a little bit, Howard. I can come back. You don't think I can come back? You and that bad thing sitting on top of your head. You don't think I can come back, huh? Well, I can't come back. All I gotta do is start all over again. George Foreman is down, incredibly here in Zaire, Africa, halfway around the world. Ali, at the age of 33, has knocked out a seemingly invincible George That's Foreman funny. in the eighth round and become only the second man ever to regain the Does heavyweight he the, uh, title. Down An incredible Does he do that part? Don't tell you, Trump. I told you I was the greatest. Uh -huh. 
October 1, 1975, Manila, the Philippines, yes. Pearl of the South Pacific. Ali, Frazier, the third time How around. Frazier? Frazier, unable to answer the bell for the 15th round. The thriller in I'm Manila. Tripping, man. This was not boxing. This was a war. A big piece of Ali remained in that ring. I fought everybody. Everybody that wants to fight me, I fought. I didn't love nobody. I was colorful. I predicted the rounds. I was bigger than boxing. My fights were seen all over the world. I fought Joe Fraser three times. I fought Ken Norton three times and sat through Mandingo twice. <laughs> I was tough to find any shavers. I was bigger than... Any place I go, they know me. I go to Bangladesh, they yell Ali. I go to Africa, they yell Ali Bombay. I, I go to Bombay. Russia, I seen Brezhnev in person. Carter couldn't get him on the phone. <laughs> 36 years of age, I'm so fair, I'm 36, so pretty, ain't that something 36 years of age looking like me? And they say that I'm slowing down. Hell, I'm still so fast, I can turn out the lights in my bedroom, be in the bed before the room gets dark. <laughs> the only thing that can whip me now is Father Time. Mm. It's over! Young Leon Spinks with only eight oh, professional boy. fights yeah. has decision to seemingly aging Muhammad Ali here in Las Vegas. An incredible upset. So much like the young Cassius Clay. Fourteen years ago in that ring in Miami Beach. The champ is dead. Long live the champ. He surprised me, that Spinks. You know, I guess that's the only thing that I can tell you, Howard, about that fight. You know, I didn't train like I wanted to train. You know, didn't do the things in the ring that I wanted to do. You know, I just gave up too much. I gave the ugly sucker the first seven rounds, and I tried to come back. Uh -oh. Beat me. <laughs> oh, Leon. They took away his driver's license. He walked into a telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's oh, saying to me now, they're saying, hey champ, you know, you must feel bad that you ain't no champ no more, you know? But you know, you lost to some kid who looked like he had a train run through his face. And I say, hey man, I ain't got nothing to be sorry about, you see? Everybody in life suffers a loss. It's the one who can overcome the loss and make a success of himself that's really doing something with his life. As I look back over my career, I was heavyweight champion 14 years ago, man. Ain't that something? 14 years ago. I've had a great life. I was been good to me. 59 professional fights, made a lot of money, got beautiful kids, great family. I got everything to look forward to. But something's eating at me. I don't want to go out losing to the Leon Spinks with eight professional fights. I don't want to be remembered as being out of shape in that ring of Las Vegas. I want him one more time. I'm gonna do it. I'm 36 years age, my body's tired, I don't like training very much, but start tomorrow, I'm getting in shape for the rematch with Leon. I'm getting up early, I'm gonna <laughs> run to the space moon. A second time, I'm gonna right? start yeah. hitting the table, do my push-up, do my sit-up, do whatever I have to do. I'm gonna take every kind of punch, do what I have to do, because I'm gonna win. I'm gonna be the first one ever to win the title for the third time. Right. Nobody's ever done nothing like that. But then again, nobody's ever done anything quite like me. And I'm predicting that I'm gonna do it, because I wanna be the heavyweight champ for the third time, because I can do it. And you can do it too. No matter what you is in life, no matter what color, no matter what religion, it's never too late to start all over again. Never forget that. And you'll never forget me. I am the greatest of all time! That was Billy Crystal's 15-round tribute to the greatest. And uh, Billy Crystal played every voice in that. He was an amazing impersonator. And he did Howard Cosell and mm -hmm. Ali to a T. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, he did. And what a relationship uh, those two had, uh, Howard Cosell and Muhammad Ali. It was kind of synonymous uh, with each other, man. And I thought um, it showed at that time um, – that those two guys, a Jewish guy and a black guy, and in the relationship, and you can see it that yeah. it was it was genuine, that it wasn't an act. Right. And I thought that came through 
um, well. And I thought that had a real impact on society. Just those two conversing and you know in front of people. You, you know, and he was. I, I agree. He was such a he was, ahead, he was such a champion for Ali. Uh, you know, I, I said on this show there are a handful of people that maybe want to get into sports casting. I mentioned Stuart Scott when he passed away earlier uh, this year. That Howard Cosell, and in particular the exchanges, that relationship that played out publicly with Ali was another another um, thing, for lack of a better word, that, that made me, I guess, want to get into this today. Watching that, watching how you could play that for the public and how you could get a message out and still have theater and entertainment and commentary all in one, um, you know, and, and you talk about the relationship with, with Ali when he had the, the gaffe on Monday Night Football when he referred to Alvin Garrett and had the mishap and they fired him. It was a lot of black folks came to Cosell's he had his back because because he had in particular Ali's back and, and because he was so fair minded and outspoken throughout his career. And that was a, a fantastic, so, you know, piece of the Ali story uh, and really helped launch him into the mainstream in, of Americana and part of I think a big part of why he's so beloved today well he definitely was without controversy and we got more to come and i got another clip to play for you guys because i want to show the whole aspect of him and he was you know he was an activist and he spoke on a lot of uh issues that plagued america and i want you guys to check this out is it okay coach absolutely let's go with it will you welcome please muhammad ali I'm not this is the word you have I'm not allowed interview. to leave the country. And I had about oh. $10 million in contracts in foreign countries, European and African countries. And the government has took, taken my passport so that I can't go out here to work. Then I cannot work in America. So, uh, and I have, a, I can name many more people, but, you know. But you can't say, though, can you, Mohammed, the simple thing that one race is righteous and another isn't. We all well, I'm, not, I'm not going into that, you know, I just said... No, but you I'm just, not, I mean, all I was, all I'm I meant was I can't person. leave you saying that. In the sense, you can't say that one race... Well, I would say that uh, weapons, all of your guns and your bombs and your poisons are created by your white race. You yes. can't say that, though, mm -hmm. we, we all risky. have... Force. I would say whiskey and, uh, uh, whiskey and homosexuality, if you go back to England, okay. your country, Europe, when they kicked out the old, you know, with whiskey and homosexuality, you wherever you, you look, remember certainly. when the old, a lot of the whites were kicked out of there. They say there's trash. They say so-called. No, but they, but I mean, the ones that you can here. you can say certain. <laughs> you can say, you can say that there are certain things that, uh, for instance, come and stem from I'll white people. I but I mean, take, I, I mean, yeah. on the other hand, mm -hmm. the black race is equally. We all have our faults. Well, you I, know? Say I that, mean, cannibalism. Where does I, that come? From? I would say this. Where I does was, ca where's I I don't know about cannibalism. All I know is what you told me in history about it. You are a wise man. You are an intelligent man. And if I was not a Muslim or follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I couldn't talk to you for two minutes. And I believe I can hold my own as an intelligent conversation with you. But it all comes from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But people praise me. Oh, you should be the leader. Well, you don't have to follow Elijah. Man, are you a fool? Everything I got come from him. He taught me who I was, he made me proud, he made me fearless, he made me love my own. I've turned down millions and to keep from selling out my people. The beautiful name Muhammad Well, he sure Ali. did. I now have 50 sure Muslim invitations by governments. All they ask me about when I go to those countries, how is Elijah Muhammad? You, you believe something which I happen to know isn't true. Now hold it. See, well, what is it that I believe? Uh, you, you, you believe it's not true. You believe that the entire white community is your enemy. I have to know it's not your enemy. I doubt if there's anybody in this room who is your I tell enemy. You what. But I do believe that just as uh, Hitler uh, persuaded all the Germans to believe yeah. that all the Jews were their yeah. enemy, that yeah. the people are engaged in spreading this kind of virulence, and that some very sincere <laughs> people get caught up in it. You're an example of it. It was very early on that I recognized that no board inquiring into his uh, 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 intellect could ever sincerely have come to the conclusion that he was uh, too dumb to be drafted because he was a very bright guy. 22 million black people in America, who would you say our everyday common enemy is? What other country or what nationality? I mean, you know, 
Uh, you have the nerve to be on a TV show like I this. They, look I, at me like I'm wrong for saying Elijah Muhammad is poisoning you by telling you that we're your enemies. Yeah. And I feel it and see it every day. And every black man watching this show know you are enemies. And you have the nerve to stand up here and say Elijah Muhammad is poisoning my mind. He cannot teach us that you are enemy. You taught us. And your people daily, you, Martin Luther King is bumped off unjustly. Adam Clayton Powell was bumped off unjustly. They took my title unjustly. Mm -hmm. They killed Megas ever unjustly. Mm -hmm. All the integrators who love white folks was unjustly kicked out of Washington. They have been deprived of education and poverty throughout the country. The extraordinary thing about it is that although I began thinking that he was simply special pleading on his own behalf, I ended up by thinking he was absolutely correct. Uh -huh. Now, now I don't say I hate you now. Well, don't say that. I'm, I know now. I was going through Mississippi on a college tour not long ago. Stopped at the Philly station. That belonged long limousine. You know, I pulled through and I traveled it because a lot of times I don't like to fly. And the fellow came out. He said, what much I give you, boy? <laughs> and had a fellow with me. He said, boy. I said, shut your mouth. <laughs> restroom. Well, I don't think it's working. I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm the guy going to stand up. I'm the champ of the whole world. You want me to fight for America and I can't even use the toilet. You want me to... I'm, what you talk... I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the... I had a right to say I'm the Olympic gold medal winner. I'm Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay. No, he's, he's mad. He called us Highway Patrol and... A Klansman might be around. I'm way back in there by myself, and I can't box that good. <laughs> so, to avoid that booby trap, to avoid that booby trap, I said, shut your mouth. We'll go down the highway and find a place we can go. We went a little farther, and we were welcomed in another one. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, like, I know, I know where to go and where not to go. Mm, what a wit. Oh. Man, and people... People want to forget that side of Muhammad Ali, man, but he spoke truth to power and did it on a regular basis and is the, the catalyst, the motivation for this show. Exactly. But this show. Wow. Right. Wow. What a what a way. I, I, I continue to, yeah, I'm just watching, going through these clips and talking about them. And even in the most not uh, in the most serious situations, in the situations where you think wit or humor or personality would be say least fitting, he still he still used that wit to win folks over and get his message out. It's just incredible. I mean, all these circumstances, you know, he's in the hospital with his jaw wired shut, or he's about to go to jail, or this situation with the bathroom. It's that that wit just keeps yeah, that personality was so strong. And so, what a gift to the world that we had, you know, for the seventy four years he was alive, and the people who remember him will have, you know, after he's long after today no oh, most definitely and i you know it just came to me of what i can kind of compare it a little bit to and um uh, probably <laughs> to, to the younger guy and i want to get chance take on it we got uh, uh yes. I mean, we got kane kane in the house and get his take on it um is that he was more like a obama figure you know how uh, mm -hmm. he, you know I mean, muhammad ali represented us like you know it's like man we was behind him and it was like he was out in the out out in front he was a, a he great had some courage, he was man. the greatest. He had the courage. And it's sort of like what Obama, like, you know, everybody was behind him. Like, you know, he, he represents us. And so it was kind of right. like that. But what, you know, do you, what do you know about um, Kane, about Muhammad Ali? And, uh, you know, I'm intrigued. Um, it's a lot of things I didn't know outside of the ring about him, um, especially the Iraq part. He going down into Iraq, you know, and, um, which, you know, releasing, helping, trying to get the soldiers out mm -hmm. that was being hostage, American soldiers, stuff like that. I never knew. I knew the end ring of, of Muhammad Ali, but to know what he did outside of the ring for the community was like, yeah, I'm really, really grateful. That was big. That was huge. Yeah, you know, I, I, the, I'm just keep, on the religious angle. A lot of folks know he converted to Islam. There's, there's a, you know, he eventually left the Nation of Islam, which is the sect most associated with with Black American Muslims, and became a Sunni. Uh, Muslim, which is one of your more traditional sects that you find in other parts of the world, and so is Saddam Hussein, and I think that was a bridge he used to, to negotiate that. A lot of folks, I mean, that's a footnote in his life, but that's huge, and that was much later in his life. Right. You know, he was almost 50. We'll hear now from Bob Pellerin and the talker of the year, Cassius Clay. 
Well, have you been going around saying that you're the resurrector of the fight game, the savior of boxing? Profit is everything. What do you think that boxing would be today if it wasn't, if you weren't around? No, man, if it wasn't for me, if it wasn't for me, would be doing good to get $50 to raise that I How to raise the price up to $250. What do you think, Mr. I've what? got people tied airplanes, models from Chicago, New York, flying special charter jet planes in, champagne flights, just to keep it this man was a character. Champagne flights. 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 Champag
<laughs> Mohammed, may I have you for a moment, please? Uh, honey. Ali is getting ready, obviously. You're so being trucking it. Ah. You're being trucking it. Do you have anything more to add after last Wednesday? I'd like to say one thing. You gave me a lot of trouble in the past. <laughs> And I've been waiting to get you on a live show. <laughs> because what I'm going to do at this moment... Is it seek to take my hand? No, not that. Not that. <laughs> what I'm going to do at this moment... I want it live so they can't erase it. I've been paid a great sum of money to slap you. <laughs> you know, Joe, and we, and we talked about this during the football say, games, you know what I'm saying? I Joe of losing his cool last Wednesday. Joe was up here before you. And I've never seen him cooler or more calm. Is this the 78 fight? Well, I think that's because he insisted. Yeah, this is the second. Okay. 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 Be yes, I see, Perry. Because he's nervous. He's frightened. He knows I'm ready. I'm wearing exactly what I weighed when I fought Sonny Liston 10 years ago. I'm stronger. I'm going to be dancing, floating like a butterfly, sleeping okay. like a bee. And I predict that this shall be no contest. George Foreman said earlier George today. Foreman. Yeah, George Foreman, you Why heard. Why do you want to make him famous? Why not? He's the champion. I know about no George Foreman. He said you in the past have never mm -hmm. fought like a big man. He says if you fight like a big man on Monday, you can win the fight. Well, if he fights like a big man, I don't want to look like a big man. <laughs> <laughs> Golly! I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about George Foreman or Joe Frazier. All right, what's your actual prediction for the fight, once and for all? Well, I'm not predicting around Howard, but I predict that I'll do what I should have done the first time. This will be a amateur meeting a great professional. Amen. This will be no contest. All right, final question. So much talk about your hand, and I asked you about it last Wednesday. What's the truth of the map? Is the hand better than it's the been? The hand's in good shape, Howard. Nothing's wrong with my hand. Nothing wrong with it at all. Better than yours. See how yours is shaking? <laughs> oh, God. I have no fears of your slapping me and the hand is shaking because of an allergic reaction to a penicillin shot, if you must know. You wouldn't know about that, would you? <laughs> In any event, good luck to you, champ. Thank you, Howard. Former I want champ. everybody to uh, be there early because we have an energy, energy crisis. Got a call from Washington, told me if I could cut this fight short, it would have kind of helped things out. <laughs> ABC's Wide World of Sports. You know, Joker, we, during some of the Friday night game of the week, sometimes, you know, the, when, the, when the competitive nature of the game goes and we'll kind of talk about sports as a whole, we've talked about this a few times, Ali and, and, and Cosell, and the dynamic and how that just kind of broadened Sports as a whole. I mean, I talked about all the paradigms. I won't go through it again. But this relationship was was special. It added more magnitude and gravity to the legend of this man. Hey, man. Uh, what's coming up after our show? Coming up in a few minutes, we have Noel, Noel Jackson with music satisfaction right here on ninety six point nine FM with the HYR. Hey, um, also, man, I want to take the time to uh, to to send a, a special apology out to. Uh, some more of our um, family members at WHYR.org. There seems to have been um, some some issues with the system on, on our behalf, and um, you know we apologize for that. It was definitely an inadvertent um, mistake. So uh, to Brian and um, the rest of the crew, Maggie um, and. Um, there, there are a couple of other names that Bruce. I need to mention um, that had to put in some extra work due, due to some negligence on our part. And I mean, just not negligence, but, uh, um, you know, just not doing um, what we were asked to do. So we, we apologize for that. We, we realize that it's a team effort that puts on the WHYR product. So um, we definitely don't want to create additional work for anyone. Um, and we thank you all. And to any show host who, whose show did not get played due to something on our behalf, uh, we apologize for that as well. 
Yes, most definitely. <clears throat> and um, man, and with that said, I wanted to play a clip from probably one of his greatest um, speeches that he's known for, and it was kind of the ascension of Muhammad Ali. Check it out. Why did this could happen to Lister? Lister was a big Why man. Why did this could happen? I think maybe back in his mind, he thought he was going to get knocked out. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think Sonny now is beginning to worry now. At least his coat is beginning to worry now because uh, I think that they feel now that they have all the comfort that he needs to go on to beat, to beat uh, Sonny. So I think that the corner now is beginning to worry a little bit now. He's saying he's going to win it now. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. <laughs> Suddenly, Ali breaks free, and he runs to the side of the ring at the presses, and he jumps up on the ropes. Now, don't forget, he's saying, I fooled you, and I fooled you, and I fooled you, and I fooled you. I'm the greatest, I'm the best. All right, we had too much confidence there. Lifting play up. Where's he make? system back going so we want to give a special thanks to bruce for for doing that job as the engineer of the station most definitely but a special shout out to bruce and to the rest of the whyr staff man and this has been a, a great show today um you know of course we're celebrating um, the life and death of muhammad ali and you know it's been it's been a surreal day actually when it, when the show first came on i kind of got emotional because uh you know like i said he is my greatest hero um, you know, when I was young, I used to want to box. I, you know, I, I, I did it a little bit. <clears throat> we had a, um, a gym right up here on, on um, Thomas H. Delpit, right behind McKinley Alumni Center. And it was a boxing gym there, and I was 11 or 12 years old. And I can remember the fight with, with Leon Spinks, and mm -hmm. he ended up getting the title for the third time. And I went in there and tried to get, <laughs> get it to ring myself, you know. Didn't turn out all that well, but, um, but just him having, being who he is. And he was almost like everything, you know. He... He was like a rapper, you know. He had he had rhymes, he had swag. So to me, he he can you know he can um, um, inspire anyone, and so and that's that's what I get when I when I think of Muhammad Ali, simply the greatest. And you know, what else can you say? Absolutely, man. And look, it's uh, it is considered very special um, for a Muslim to be called home during the holy month of Ramadan. And the holy month of Ramadan uh, starts tomorrow in America, um, but started today in other parts of the world. So um, that just shows how special um, that Muslim was, um, how special he is, because, um, you know, his image, his name, his presence will be with us forever. And um, we want to wish all the Muslims around the world um, Ramadan Mubarak, which um, stands for a blessed Ramadan um, as you go through the 30-day fasting period around the world. Is it that time, fellas? Uh, it's just we're about getting that close. time, man. we got a minute and a um, half left. I just want to give shouts out and say happy birthday to my mother. My mother, was, uh, she turned 67. Uh, to Gwendolyn Hawkins, I want to say I love you and um, happy birthday, Jan, uh, Kane. Oh, I enjoyed the show, man. Y'all gave me some knowledge on this today. I, I really appreciated that, man. And um, rest in peace to the Ali, the greatest, and his family, man. We here for y'all. Yeah, rest in peace. ADT. Go, rest in peace to the champ. Go ahead, Perry. 
ADT, JNS, love you. Have a good afternoon.